Shunogurose. This is part 28 of my figure gaming comic series of videos and I'll be covering using MDF to create playing areas. This is uh, one of a number of videos on the subject of creating playing areas and in this case I'm exploring the idea of using MDF sheets to create a playing area, something that in the past I never really considered very much. Of course, the first question you may ask is why should I bother using a sheet of MDF as a playing area? First of all, if you're using a terrain sheet and are happy with it, the answer is you'll not be interested in created, creating a playing area using some form of textured fine turf using MDF. However, if you want a playing area with texture and a 3D effect, then you will need to create it from something and MDF is a possible material to do so. The common material players use to create playing areas with this kind of texture are cork tiles, sheets of insulation or something similar or possibly polystyrene. Each have their advantages and disadvantages. Cork tiles are probably the most flexible, easiest to store and transport, but they are heavy and you will see lines between the cork tiles and you've got to line them all up before a game. Sheets of insulation are a good solution. They are light and you can minimize lines on your playing area as you can see on this sheet. In this particular case, uh, these are two sheets of insulation created by a gamer of Panzercore somewhere in North America, I think, um, from memory. And I certainly do thank him for allowing me to use this image. Polystyrene is also a very good solution, light and very flexible but very fragile, suitable for a static playing area but less so when you're on the move, unless your playing area is very small as the GHQ playing area system uses. 3mm thick MDF is also very light, which is a major advantage. If I could solve the, pro the bending issue, which is really the main issue with anything to do with MDF, it could be used as, uh, it could be as good as sheets of insulation. Anyone who's used MDF will realize that if you have a long sheet of MDF and you apply glue to one side, it will bend. And it's really hard to get rid of that bend. Unless, of course, you're using incredibly thick sheets of MDF, as another fellow player told me he does. I've covered, um, covered most playing area types in my previous videos, but I've always avoided MDF because it has a tendency to bend. One player did reply to one of my videos stating he uses MDF, but he uses very thick MDF. I did go down this path, but the result was something that was very heavy. So uh, it was not very useful as a, a playing area that I could transport around. As a result, this sheet is now a painting board. I also tried thin sheets, but because of the bending problems, I actually uh, retasked them as terrain, as uh, when I first attempted to use it, it really bent quite severely when I applied glue to them. I did see an image on the internet which showed a Napoleonics game being played on what looked like a very large shallow box. I'm uncertain what the base of the box was, but it could have been MDF. The terrain was all cardboard based. The playing area looked like it was three by three feet in size, which is a reasonably sized playing area. While this is possibly a bit large for my purposes, it did lay very flat on the table. MDF, even if not painted, will bend due to moisture. In this case, the bending was eliminated because of the use of wooden edges. So after looking at this image, I decided that this could be a solution to my MDF bending problem, that is, apply a wooden frame to the MDF. While I currently use sheets of insulation, actually they're pin boards, um, I did not like cutting the insulation or pin board because the cut was very uneven, even if I used a fine blade on jigsaw. So as a result, I have to use it as it's supplied, which is 120 by 80 centimeters in size. Now that is a good size, but unfortunately most tables are 76 centimeters deep or wide so my playing area overhangs at each end. Now this is not a major issue, but I'm certain the edges will break one day. 
As a result, when I uh, use these playing areas, um, I tend to use two of them together to give me a large playing area, which requires two tables put together. And if I use a single table, I just have to accept the overhang and accept the fact that if I hit it, even though it doesn't move because I lay this on a sheet of felt, uh, it does shake a bit and cause my figures to shake accordingly. Now, using a wooden framed MDF playing area will allow me to create any size of playing area I wish, with any irregular cuts being hidden by the wooden edges of the wood I use. Thus, I decided to create a 2 by 3 foot, or to be very specific, 60 by 90 centimeter playing area. After I started, I realized I could have created a playing area which is exactly the depth of a table. This is probably something I will attempt later because that maximizes my playing area uh, for game purposes and allows me to have a game where both players are seated on a single table, which is really a holy gra grail that I've uh, attempted to aim for. The uh, sheet of MDF I used was a very large sheet of 3mm MDF. The sheet size was 4 by 6 feet and the wooden frame that I use was a 12mm square pine. I cut the MDF sheet to the size I wanted, which gave me an internal space which was slightly greater than 90cm by 60cm. So the MDF sheet I cut had to be larger than this uh, by a factor of 12mm along its edges. I cut the 12mm wood to the desired lengths and used hardware quality PVA or PVC glue to glue the edges, these wooden pieces, onto the MDF board. This shows my clamps holding the wooden edge on the cut MDF sheet. It is critical that you hold it in as many points as possible because the MDF board will bend and you don't want a situation where you're gluing a MDF board in a bent state together. In this particular case, it's firmly right along. Also, uh, by firmly gluing it right along, you end up with an incredibly strong bond, critical also to avoid a bending. As you can see, uh, this MDF sheet was previously used as a painting service. I actually initially purchased it uh, thinking that I would use it as a playing area, that is one big sheet and applying the glue. But after I discovered that as soon as you applied glue, the thing tended to do bend like a pretzel, uh, I gave up on that strategy and used my big sheets of MDF as a painting board. Now they're gonna be used in their original, or as their original purpose as a playing area. Okay, this shows three edges are in place, two glued and dried and one in a drying state. This shows a close-up of the wooden edge I'm using. I went with a 12mm square to ensure I got a lot of surface for gluing and wanted to stay as low as possible. I considered 12mm thick and 20mm high, which would have given me more strength but I didn't need it and I think it's better to go as low as possible in order to, uh, to achieve the stopping and bending effect without going any further than necessary. The sheet sits flat on any surface and while it can flex, the important thing is it's light. It's probably as light as my insulation board playing area. Once the wooden edges are fully glued and in place and dry, you can now paint the playing area. I use two coats the undercoat and the final coat, which is as close to the color of the fine turf I will close cover it with as possible. Here you see the painted playing area with roads painted in. I make a reasonable effort in smoothing out the corners. In this case, the side piece was slightly too short, so I filled in the gap with wood putty. Some thought will need to go into the road networks, and this does depend on the period and rules you'll be using. This road network is suitable for micro armor specifically and also Napoleonics. But to accommodate age ancients, I will try and make the roads on either side of the main road into something that looks more like side tracks. Roads are mainly used in micro armor for supply purposes. In Napoleonics, they are used mainly to identify objectives and to place towns and villages. In ancients, they have minimal, if any, value. If you were creating an ancient's playing area, you could decide to avoid inserting roads into the playing area entirely. This shows the board with fine turf applied. The glue is not dried yet, and I've not sprayed a layer of glue on top of this yet as well. I use woodland green and brown blended turf. 
Use Hobby Hobby PVA glue and apply across the surface th that will uh, take the turf. Try and make it as thin as possible. If you leave a spot that's a little bit too thick, you'll get a slightly um, sort of a, a glassy effect. You could say that that looks a bit like a, a swampy ground, so it's not a big issue, but if you want to avoid it, try and apply the glue as thin and evenly as possible. Once you've done that, and the way I use here is I apply the glue to the entire playing area. You could decide to do half, and then when that's complete to do the other half, but I felt in this particular case I could go with the whole playing area. You then apply patches of brown fine turf. Pick up the board once you've applied all the brown fine turf and shake around until the brown fine turf is spread across the glue. Once all the brown turf is applied as you wish to apply it, you then apply the green blended turf. I use some sort of colander to spread the fine turf evenly across the board. You can cover the brown turf, that's not an issue because the brown turf will have soaked up the glue the only reason why it may cause a problem is if you applied too much glue, the brown turf so soaks up the glue and it's gluey at the top of it, in which case the green turf will then glue onto it. So try and keep the um, amount of glue as low as possible. Now you will have to hand apply the fine turf along the edges of the playing area. Once you have a reasonable cover, and I normally make sure the whole thing looks green, you then pick up the playing area and shake around until the green turf really does evenly cover everything. Now once it covers everything as quickly as possible, tip the playing area up to remove all the loose fine turf. Now if not enough of the brown turf is visible, you may wish to blow over where the brown turf is to remove any green turf which is just partially sticking to the brown turf. You want to have the two-tone effect, I'm assuming, um, because quite frankly, single tone looks incredibly boring. You can actually try more than two tones, and I've done this in the past, but it ends up looking a bit too, you know, arty-farty, and it doesn't quite look that good. I prefer to have just two-tone, uh, although you can consider putting flower, like a little bit of red around the corner or something like that to give it a bit of te additional texture. That's entirely your choice. As I kind of briefly indicated, some gamers add fine red turf to give you the effect of flowers, red, white, or other colors. Other f effects could include, um, you know, a darker brown fine turf along the road edges for dirt. However, as I've kind of indicated, don't put too many different colors in your playing area, otherwise it may end up looking like something from the game Artigra. Saying that, Woodland does sell a packet of four different flower colors so you can achieve a nice flower effect if you wish to do so. I will try it with my next playing area, although my garage is getting rather full of playing areas right now, so I'm not sure how many more playing areas I wish to create. At this point of the process, after applying the fine turf and it has dried, I have detected no bending in the playing area at all. It sets very flat on a flat surface and nothing raises in the setter, which means that it's very good. Now, you've heard me mention before, if you put a bit too much glue, you get these kind of uh, glossy effects. You'll notice kind of in the center of this, there's along the road, uh, a slightly glossy effect. That's because the glue, there's too much glue and it's come through. Now, some of that will disappear when you spray over it, but some will not. The next test will be the spraying of watered down PVA glue onto this playing board, as this probably does a fairly good dampening, job dampening the entire MDF board. So armed with my trusty spray can, which has a solution of around about one third PVA glue and two thirds water and a little bit of dishwashing material. This is the board after it's been sprayed. One note about the roads. In an ideal world, I would have flocked the roads before doing this. However, I'm still trying to find the best material to represent roads. What you see here is paint, which is acceptable, but I feel the roads are a bit too dark and a bit too reddish. I also use a more dry, dirt, brown colour paint, which probably may be better, but I would prefer to fill in the roads with some type of material to give me more of a road effect. I'm thinking of light brown ballast from Woodland, but before I do anything I need to test it. I may also try maybe a bit of a two-tone road effect. 
It is possible to add the road material um, and spray after this. So really getting it right, that is getting the roads right at this point, is not really a high priority. 24 hours have passed and this is the playing area nice and dry. One observation is because of the wooden bits of wood I uh, placed underneath the board uh, to avoid the board gluing onto my painting surface, it did kind of bend in the center. Okay, I, I don't know what I can do about it. And as it turned out, it wasn't a major issue. When I looked at the board carefully, uh, the edges of the playing area were flat on the surface, but the center had curved upwards, forming a hill in the center. Again, I'm pretty certain this was due to the blocks of wood. I used it to keep off the surface. And what I discovered later is that by removing the blocks, and placing it on a flat surface for a period of time, the bend slowly disappeared. And after 24 to 48 hours, it totally disappeared. It could also be because the MDF board is still a little bit wet at this point and it needed to dry. The conclusion is the MDF board is nice and flat and ready for a game. I have to consider this a resounding success. This is currently what I'm considering for roads, fine brown ballast. I've tried fine turf and the browns are either too light or too dark and anyway don't look like roads, it looks more like a strip of grass. This on the other hand is uh, made of some kind of rocky material which is very fine and I think is the correct colour. As a result I think it would give me more of a uh, road sort of effect. If this fails I may just leave the roads as they are but perhaps repaint them once I find a better paint colour that represents the roads. One advantage of this sort of shallow box effect is the ability to create non-fixed ter terrain which fits nicely into the playing area box. This comes from my 30cm tile set and is a three-layered hill for the edges of my playing area. Unfortunately my tiles uh, are actually 12 inches in length because you can only purchase imperial measure tiles in, in the country I live, even though the country I live in is 100% is metric. I suppose um, cork tiles are not really considered very fashionable, so they're only pretty much made in the US where possibly fashion is not so important. As a result, uh, two of these 30 centimeter or 12 inch edge playing areas do not really fit into my playing area. They're just uh, maybe about five mil too long. I will have to create special 30 centimeter terrain pieces for this purpose, which I was planning anyway. Regardless, you know, my edge hill terrain um, ideas have sort of uh, developed quite a bit. In the past, I just had basically uh, two sheets of 30 centimeter terrain. If I had a, a, a road running there, the road would disappear. I'd put a town at the end. What I do now, or what I will do in the future, is I think I may go for three 20 centimetre pieces with the middle one with a road running through it and also have an alternate end piece which means that the um, you know I could put two 20 centimetre hills along the edge and then put two end pieces of possibly uh, 12 centimetre length which sort of sort of is an end of the hill and that way the road looks like it's going through a valley or have a 20 centimetre piece there where the road actually runs up the hill so, you know, that gives me a little bit more flexibility with the use of my road edges. Is it really essential? Not really. I, I just like the idea of making this kind of terrain and I think it may look nice. Now, one other thing I did notice when trying some of my terrain pieces in this playing area, if my terrain piece is very long, which is the case for my streams terrain piece, which happens to be 40 centimetres, 40 centimetres in length, it can slightly bend in the centre. I never noticed this before, so I suspect it's because of the way I'm storing it. But I, as a result, I think I will have to limit my terrain to probably a maximum of 30 centimetres long, uh, or ac actually optimally 20 centimetre. My 40 centimetre stream pieces are designed for my um, pinboard terrain, which happens to be 80 centimetres in length. That's why I have two 40s. I suspect uh, that 40 centimetres may be a bit long for MDF. Or alternatively, I'm going to have to change the way I store it to keep it flat. Okay, one point about my terrain um, is that it's not really focused on creating a diorama quality terrain. 
While I like good looking playing areas, my main focus is always gaming. So my terrain is always mainly focused on being gaming friendly. In this case, for example, the buildings are placed on the roads as objectives for a game. If I expected to fight in built up areas, which may not be common in Napoleonics but is possible, I would place a build up terrain piece similar to the hill, which was four centimeter, which is a four centimeter square and has a sort of a grey ballast on it to indicate built up areas. The building would then be placed on top of this piece. When troops decide they want to occupy it, the buildings are removed but you still retain something which looks like a built-up area to indicate the troops are occupying a built-up area. This is a major issue with uh, buildings because they look nice, but uh, what do you do when you want to fight from them? You know, do you have to remove the building? And if you remove the building, you know, the built-up area location may suddenly shift a little bit, which can be a little bit of annoyance. While not specifically to do with the playing area, a quick comment about basing. These figures are based for DBN, although this game is not DBN, as the number of elements, as you can see, is far too large. I like the idea of the deeper infantry base with two ranks and have created a Prussian DBM army using this basing. Incidentally, I used my poorest quality figures for this um, because I wasn't sure if it was a good idea. And, you know, you know, as a result, it possibly doesn't look as good as high, my high quality figures. However, for other rules, I've decided to not go down this path and have remained with 2cm deep bases for my infantry. I will be experimenting with 3cm deep infantry bases with one rank and more base diorama on it, which is why I am using my DVN figures for this test game. I'm determining if there is any issues with using 3cm for these rules, and so far it appears not. I suspect having slightly deeper infantry bases uh, is not really a major issue for any set of rules that I'm aware of, but um, until you actually test it, you can never be certain. However, this basing dilemma is one of the main annoyances I have with the Napoleonic period. I actually will be ending up with three Prussian force mixes, one for DBN, which uses the 3cm 2 rank infantry bases, one for my standard Napoleonic rules, which uses a 2cm single rank infantry bases, and a third option, which uses 3cm deep infantry bases, but with one rank and more diorama on the base. Some mixing can occur as the cavalry and artillery all use the same base sizes, although I'm wondering if I should use a 3cm base depth for battalion guns. Back to my playing area. This shows how light my playing area is. I can easily hold it with one hand for almost any length of time. It is very light indeed. If I tried this with my old plywood based playing area, long since thrown away, I'd find it hard to hold for more than a few minutes. This playing area passes the weight test with flying colours. What you see here in this image, and it's a little bit hard to see, is a black line in the centre of the image. This is my playing area on its side upright. As you can see, no bending at all. This passes the bending test with flying colours. The other test was storage. This playing area can easily be stored, so it passes that test very well indeed. I was thinking of creating a cover to go over this so I could place terrain pieces inside the playing area box. You know, the cover could be clamped down some way at the, three, at the four corners, etc. That way I could have my playing area and all my terrain in a single 12 mil thick, or, or actually to be accurate, almost uh, two centimeter thick arrangement. However, I suspect this may be a little bit of overkill. So it comes to a close, my part 28 of my player ideas video series. In this case, using MDF as a playing area. Denken Sie daran, immer für Hilfe, Heimatland, Zukunft.